Welcome to the Popcorn Junkies, and here we are with a review of the Norwegian supernatural thriller, The Innocents. <gasps> We mentioned this in the Weekly Rushes. It's directed by uh, a chap called Eskil Vot, 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 uh, who was also, interestingly, the screenwriter, the screenwriter of The Worst Person in the World, which we have uh, been banging on about how brilliant it is and was on, on this channel. So this is The Innocence, and this is a film. Uh, it is essentially, I, I would describe it as a supernatural horror film. Uh, it's located on a Norwegian housing estate. Um, a family moves in. Uh, it's a, a husband, a wife, two children. The elder of the children uh, uh, suffers or struggles with or lives with um, extreme autism. Um, she can't talk and uh, she needs a lot of help and supervision uh, and she has a younger sister. Uh, and right at the beginning of the film, and I think this opening scene in this film is really clever because it kind of gives you in microcosm uh, the kind of contrasting sort of themes and kind of subject matters, if you like, of this film. Whilst in the back of the car, there's the quite severely autistic older sister on one side and there's the younger girl, a remarkable young actress called Raquel Lenora Flottam. She's absolutely quite something. Um, but within this opening scene, as they're driving along, heading to their new uh, home or their new flat, um, she pinches her sister, she pinches the autistic sister, really hard on the, on the leg to see if there's any reaction. And there's none. And I thought this was really interesting because she looks kind of, she's got no expression, the younger girl, when she's pinching. She's just intrigued. She's curious. And I think this film is, one of its themes really is the curiosity of children, innocent children, with the edges of pain, death, life, torture and cruelty. Uh, and I think if you think about children, children are always challenging the boundaries. There's always someone in a group that's kind of intrigued with kind of, I don't know, torturing an ant or an insect or something like that. And there's obviously all the stories of if children, that children that kind of kill or torture or are cruel to animals, there's a sort of psychopathy in there. But I wonder if in a weird way, this film is kind of nibbling at the edges of whether there's psychopathy in the very essence of being a child. So anyway, so you've got this autistic daughter, you've got the younger daughter, she's kind of challenging the boundaries of kind of pain and agony. The parents move into the uh, this Norwegian housing estate. Whilst out and about, um, the younger younger sister uh, bumps into uh, a boy, uh, a very curious boy, played by Sam Ashraf, uh, a boy called Ben, who's in the woods, uh, and discovers that he has a sort of telekinesis or an ability to make stones or bottle tops fly across the floor. Uh, unnerving and weird in, an, in and of itself. But what I liked about the way this kind of supernatural kind of power was presented was that, as it would be with children, it was something to giggle about, something to laugh about, something to try yourself, uh, and something not necessarily to be like, how does this work? This can't actually work. This isn't scientific. This is weird. It's just something that he can do. And so that they discover this boy has this ability to kind of fire things. And then over a period of time with them going out and playing out, and I was reminded very much of, of you know, childhood in the 70s. This could probably only happen in Norway where kids could be allowed to kind of go out and run about and, and, and get up to all sorts of things and without the worry of, of what could happen to them courtesy of adults. Um, we have a small group of friends begins to develop from four different sort of, or three different households. Um, there's a younger girl who uh, lives with her mum. Uh, there's the boy that, that, that we've met who can make things fly around uh, and then of course there's the two sisters one autistic and and, and in a sense our, our key character the main the main child Ida and so Ida starts to play with this boy Ben more and more and more and they start to play with this cat um, and and we have a really cruel I mean anyone who's kind of sensitive about cruelty to animals obviously there is no cruelty to literal animals in the making of this film but there is a scene where they do something really unkind to a cat challenging to a cat and then Ben does something unspeakable to the cat's head after this and so this sense of experimentation and challenging the norms challenging the edges of what it means to sort of you know be a child and play and so what essentially happens is this boy has incredibly powerful telekinesis powers. He can not only make things move, he can make people do things, he can make things happen. Uh, there's a wonderful phrase they use for it called fetching. I can fetch people. I can make people do things against their own will. And, and so a, a really low level sense of cruelty starts to creep in. There's a really really stressful scene between Ben and his own mum in their flat where again you know he, he manages to make things move and make things fly around there's a bit of carry in there it's like carry but it's kind of on a really ordinary um, housing estate there's some really wonderful kind of camera work you know the film sort of builds there's a slow atmospheric build as we begin to realize that uh, actually this boy's powers even though there are some powers now in like the, the girl that the, the other girl that they've met Asia who lives lives next door um the, the, they've all managed to it's almost like they managed to um 
uh, transmit their powers between each other. So, for example, the girl with severe autism begins to slowly be able to talk courtesy of the pairing almost of the another one of the other girls called Aisha. So there's a, an ability between them all to kind of impact and affect each other. And, and curiously, the one girl who has the least powers or discovers that she has the least powers in the group is Ida, the, the girl that, you know, the main girl that was pinching her sister in the car at the beginning. And so you have this sense of these kids have got these these powers, they've got these sort of uh, abilities to make people do things, to make things fly around. The boy manages at one point to make a, another boy who's playing football's shin snap. Oh my God, the sound of the look is hideous. He makes things fly around. He can crack trees. You know, there's these sort of standoffs where he's kind of getting cross and what have you. It then transpires that he does something pretty catastrophic and awful in his own flat with his mum. And I thought this boy was amazing. He's amazing little actor, Sam Ashraf. So he's obviously got these powers. He's obviously got massive anger issues. Things kick off in a big way. He makes decisions and does things to those closest to him that leaves him even more vulnerable. But he can't stop. He can't stop. And so gradually he sort of exploits his strengths and his powers more and more. And and what happens, it becomes a really clever film about, it's a bit Lord of the Fliesy, you know, about when such power is parked within the minds and hearts of children and they don't know how to control these powers. What stops them from just going on a rampage and killing each other? And without giving away all the nuanced details, it becomes, it, it's a pretty heady mix of horror, menace. Um, it goes a bit supernatural at times. I mean, one of the things that Ida, our main girl, can do, which I, I, it kind of wasn't really explained in any more detail, is she can kind of, a stick became a snake. And, and so they have these strange powers. And I love the way the title, The Innocents, The Innocents, because of course they are innocents. And yet at the same time, they're in possession of these extraordinary powers that can, that can deliver death and destruction and, and catastrophe in, in, in equal measure. There were moments of great tenderness as well where, you know, the parents of the autistic child and Ida uh, are so are just so delighted when they discover that their daughter, Anna, the autistic girl, is starting to say they're, you know, it's called them Papa and Mama and things like that. And then, you know, the camera work, there's this sense of within the housing estate of there being another sort of, another sort of being, another sort of presence, another sort of energy, because we have these great drone shots that are moving around the buildings, moving past the windows. You've got a sense of them all kind of stacked on top of each other within this housing estate. Uh, and then you've got, you know, obviously uh, that it plays on the idea that, you know, are parents safe? Are parents safe? But because this boy, Ben, can make people, can fetch people, can make adults do things that they wouldn't normally do, suddenly the safe people in these families, the parents, take on a more sinister edge because are they being themselves or are they being controlled by Ben you know this boy I mean what this boy's beef is I don't know is he just born evil has he just got these powers from from where and, and in a sense what makes the film all the more powerful is that it's clearly a kind of fable or, or an allegory or a metaphor because it doesn't really matter where he's come from is he is he an alien is he supernatural what the hell's going on where does he get these powers from it's what children do and how children treat each other when they have these supremely sort of life or death uh, powers and so it does nibble at the edges of Carrie and all those sorts of films and as some some of the reviewers have been saying this is definitely going to be given the Hollywood treatment at some point I was getting lots of let the right one in vibes you know that horror film uh, vampire film that's kind of again set within a, a sort of housing estate kind of ordinary horror and I would class this as ordinary horror though there are some extraordinary moments there's a particular dream sequence that's very frightening when Ida is kind of trying to get out of a wood or of a, out of a forest and you've got these tall malevolent kind of figures and then there's a moment where um Aisha one of the, one of the girl's mums uh her mum becomes possessed or is, is being is being operated if you like by Ben and once again you know the safety of a mother becomes really really quite sort of you know fragile because actually she's no longer safe she's actually you know someone who could kill it plays with point of view. It plays with notions of innocence and experience. It plays with the, I think it's really interested in the inherent exploration and experimentation of being a child and how children that aren't evil want to test the edges 
of where evil lies. They want to pinch, they want to hurt, they want to enact change. You know, I remember playing with peg guns with my friends and hitting a pigeon and it exploding. You know, and, and that was there was a sort of terror in that. And yet there was power in that. And it was a sort of, we knew we'd done something wrong. I mean, to be honest, it wasn't me who'd done it. But you know what I mean? And so I think the idea of childhood not necessarily being this place of pure innocence and just kind of playing benignly. The, the, you know, kids are interested in testing the boundaries. And this film's very clever because it just part supernatural powers in those children and then watch how children can test the edges of power and what have you and yet at, at its heart there's a one of the most standout scenes is the scene where ben who essentially is the mastermind or the telekinetic kind of whiz kid who's essentially causing havoc even he has a breakdown point when what he's done to his mum is a little bit too much. I would highly recommend this film. If you're a fan of creepy supernatural horror films, don't be put off by the subtitles. This is yet another brilliant, inventive, thoughtful, uh, subtle and sophisticated horror film. For more film and family fun, don't forget to click the subscribe button and make sure to click the bell to never miss an update.